Thank you to Mr. G. Ever Griffin and all those who have taken the red pill. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News at ClimateViewer.com and I have an important message about geoengineering and breaking the water cycle. Climate change advocates are single-mindedly focused on CO2 as a cause of our current and future woes, but I believe this is a grand deception with a nefarious purpose. It's all about the control of water. While billions are spent on geoengineering research, very little attention is given to the main problems are oceans, trees, and bacteria which are essential to our natural water cycle. Clean drinking water is becoming scarce as our skies are constantly under attack from those who seek to control the distribution of rain. As retired Colonel David Kaczynski said it, Fresh water has been dubbed blue gold in many publications as potable water will be to this century what oil was to the last century. For this reason, I have meticulously researched the topic of climate engineering and created the world's most thorough website on the subject, weathermodificationhistory.com, with a timeline covering 1800 to present. While you and your CO2 emissions are blamed for extreme weather events, increasingly powerful hurricanes, and other life-threatening events related to climate change, nobody knows about the climate changers. It is my belief that global technocrats and their climate intervention technologies, which have been in use for over a hundred years, are deliberately trying to replace the natural water cycle with a scientifically controlled weather manipulation system that will pick and choose the winners and losers based on decisions made by a board of technocrat supervisors far removed from public debate or interest. This conspiracy involves the destruction of three major parts of our water cycle, the oceans, trees, and bacteria. Each part of this cycle is essential for creating clouds and rain, and each are being replaced by industrial solutions with monetary agendas and thus human control. While our oceans are coated in plastic, our trees are cut down, and pesticides are killing off cloud-creating bacteria, you are to blame and nothing is being done to fix the aforementioned three. Step 1. Destroy the Ocean most water vapor evaporation comes from the uppermost layer of our oceans. A scientific theory known as the claw hypothesis states that our planet has a self-regulating system in place for controlling global temperature, cloud cover, and dust rainfall, phytoplankton. As the earth warms, more phytoplankton grow, and they produce dimethyl sulfide, which is a cloud condensation nuclei, or cloud seed. As clouds form, each the earth begins to cool, reducing phytoplankton, and the cycle repeats. In an article titled, Phytoplankton Population Drops 40% Since 1950, and another titled, What's Happening to the Ocean's Phytoplankton, they blame the following. Losses of diatoms were most significant in the North Pacific, North Indian, and Equatorial Indian Oceans. The scientist's study suggested that the likely cause was a shallowing of the mixed layer by 5.9 feet. The mixed layer is the uppermost layer of the ocean, and the shallowing would reduce the nutrients available for phytoplankton growth. Why the mixed layer is shallowed is still uncertain. Shallowing of the uppermost layer of the ocean will lead to less evaporation, less DMS, and less phytoplankton. The cause of the two major sources, plastic and radiation. The best documented cases of this are the Great Pacific Garbage Patch and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear meltdown. While the Pacific Gyre is the most known, there are actually five major collection zones for ocean plastics affecting phytoplankton growth, and cesium-137 has coated the entire Pacific Ocean, leading to the deaths of many essential life forms. I believe a combination of the two contaminants has led to less evaporation and less cloud formation. Here's where geoengineering comes into play. Ship tracks and contrail cirrus. International shipping has replaced the phytoplankton DMS cycle with ship tracks. Sulfur-lined stratocumulus clouds created by dirty bunker fuel. As MIT University states in the title of its recent article, we're about to kill a massive, accidental experiment in reducing global warming, where they claim that new international laws reducing fuel sulfur and shipping will lead to global warming. They all but admit that if it weren't for ships burning fuels that created clouds thousands of miles long and hundreds of miles wide, we would all be in great peril. In addition, 
Bill Gates and the Marine Cloud Brightening Project are proposing creating fleets of drone boats to spray seawater into the sky to make clouds whiter, which will reflect sunlight and cool the planet, a process known as solar radiation management. What they fail to mention is this would also double as a scientifically controlled evaporation system. Finally, the airline industry's 110,000 plus flights per day are dumping trillions of gallons of water vapor in the sky and creating a subvisual ice haze that is blocking sunlight, according to Chuck Long from NOAA's Earth Systems Research Lab. This was covered in a Smithsonian Magazine article titled, Airplane Contrails May Be Creating Accidental Geoengineering. As you can see, Geoengineering clouds and water vapor are repl replacing natural ocean evaporation cycle, which is dying as a result of pollution, none of which has anything to do with CO2. Step number two, cut down trees. Three things are necessary for clouds to form and rain to fall. Water vapor, static electricity, and dust. Dust in this case is called cloud condensation nuclei or cloud seeds. In a recent study by Jasper Kirkby at CERN's Cosmics Leaving Outdoor Droplets Cloud Experiment, they proved that trees were an excellent source of cloud seeding by creating clouds in a chamber using only cosmic rays, water vapor, and aerosols, dust, from coniferous trees. This basically debunked every climate model on the planet that assumed pre-industrial times were less cloudy. The results not only point to a cloudier past, but indicate a potentially cooler future. If Earth's climate is less sensitive to rising CO2 levels, as the study suggests, future temperatures may not rise as quickly as predicted. Some scientists have warned that measures such as scrubbing sulfur dioxide from coal plant emissions could remove some of the beneficial cooling effects of clouds and boost global warming, but this may now be less of a concern because trees can seed clouds too. What it means is we don't have to fear clean air, says Stevens. It is also interesting to speculate whether trees emit these compounds and in part because there is a benefit to them in making their own climate, Kirkby says. This really does touch on the Gaia hypothesis, he says, referring to the theory that Earth's life behaves as a single organism that tends to preserve itself, it's a beautiful mechanism for trees to control their own environment. Nonetheless, trees are being decimated around the globe, especially old growth forests, which are essential to cloud formation and CO2 removal, a double whammy. In the 1930s, the United States of America had serious climate change, the Dust Bowl. What did we do to fix that climate change? We planted trees. By 1942, 220 million trees had been planted, stretching over 18,600 miles in a 100 mile wide zone from Canada to the Brazos River. Even as of 2007, the federal response to the Dust Bowl, including the Prairie States Forestry Program, which planted the Great Plains Shelter Belt, and creation of the Soil Erosion Service represents the largest, most focused effort of the U.S. government to address an environmental problem. The title says it all in an article from November of 2017. In Nebraska, historic shelter belts are making way for more crops. We fix the Dust Bowl by planting trees, then decades later, we cut them down too. Why? Profits over people and planet. Step three, kill the cloud seeding bacteria, the Monsanto connection. Not only do trees provide natural cloud seeding, but a little known bacteria called Pseudomonas syringae is also a major player in the water cycle and they are being destroyed by industrial pesticides. In an article titled Genetically Modified Weather, the Tale of Frost Ban Synthetic Bacteria by Rick Shankman, he tells of the roots of pesticides and how these frost-creating bacteria are being destroyed. While bad for industrial farms, these bacteria form natural cloud seeds and are essential for the water cycle. Pesticides like Roundup are being sprayed in the billions of gallons worldwide each year, exacerbating this problem. What is the solution? Science, of course, and patents for genetically modified aluminum-resistant seeds. 
1946, cloud seeding was invented at the General Electric's laboratory by Irving Langmire, Bernard Vonnegut, and Vincent Schaefer. Since then, cloud seeding has become a worldwide, multi-billion dollar industry replacing natural cloud seeds from trees and bacteria. Over 50 countries worldwide participate in cloud seeding activities using silver iodide flares burned from aircraft, ground-based cloud seeding generators, dry ice, urea, which is fertilizer, rockets, cloud ionization generators, and even concrete. Anyone with a couple hundred thousand dollars can buy rain, and others, like the military, can decide which countries get no rain at all, also known as a rain embargo like the CIA did to Cuba in 1969. Water is life, and it is under their control. Fix climate change today. As you can see, our natural water cycle is being replaced by scientists and technocrats who seek to control our most precious commodity, water. It is in our interest to expose these men and their geoengineering activities to restore natural weather before they can further control our lives and decide who lives or who dies. As David Keith, a top geoengineering scientist said, if there was a collective decision to do geoengineering program and you put a million tons of sulfur a year into the stratosphere, you might end up killing many tens of thousands of people a year as a direct result of that decision. I think that has moral consequences. I don't sweep that under the rug. Therefore, we need to restore our natural water cycle by cleaning up our oceans, replanting our forests, and banning industrial pesticides or more geoengineering is what we'll get. Fixing these three issues will cost less in the long run and ensure a natural path forward. I hope that you will support my draft legislation, the Environmental Modification Accountability Act, available at climateviewer.com slash nmod, E-N-M-O-D, as a solution to bring transparency and verification to the secret world of climate engineering. This act will hopefully shed light on the scope of our current problems and refocus our attention on fixing climate change today. Clean our oceans, plant trees, and reduce the use of pesticides. Thank you very much for listening to this important message about geoengineering and weather modification. I hope that you will make a difference. Only you can.